Hello MotoGP fans, welcome back to ZNGP today. As Francesco Bagnaia enjoys a dominant season, winning both the sprint and main race at Assen, the focus is shifting towards the upcoming challenge of having Marc Marquez as his Ducati teammate in 2025. Experts are predicting intense competition and potential upheaval within the Ducati team. Francesco Bagnaia's recent double victory at Assen has brought him level with Casey Stoner in terms of wins on a Ducati, with both now holding 23 wins each. Despite this achievement, Bagnaia humbly downplays the comparison with the Australian legend. Pedro Acosta has a unique opportunity this weekend at the German Grand Prix to set a new record as the youngest MotoGP race winner, surpassing Marc Marquez's long-standing achievement. As Promac departs Ducati for Yamaha, VR46 aims to secure a factory-spec Ducati for the 2025 MotoGP season, targeting a third factory bike amidst Ducati's evolving team lineup. Don't forget to click subscribe button and the bell icon for MotoGP news update. Francesco Bagnaia's impressive performance continues to capture attention, but the spotlight is also on next season's anticipated clash with Marc Marquez. TNT Sports pundit Neil Hodgson has weighed in, predicting significant changes and challenges for Bagnaia. Pecco knows what's coming. A storm is coming, massively. Marc likes to take over the garage and get everyone on his side. It's going to be much harder for Pecco with Marc coming into his family. Ducati will back the winner, and it will be tricky for Ducati management. Quote from Neil Hodgson. Hodgson's comments highlight the anticipated internal rivalry and the potential challenges Ducati will face in managing two top two riders. Five-time world champion Mick Duan also shared his thoughts on the dynamic between Bagnaia and Marquez. Duan sees the pairing as a significant boost for Ducati, despite the expected tension. They are both strong personalities with similar mindsets. It's a win for Ducati in terms of bike development, but it may make it more difficult for other Ducati riders. Pecco is in his prime, while Mark is recovering from a tough period. It's not going to be easy for either of them, but Ducati will benefit. Quote from Mick Duin. Duin's insight suggests that while the competition will be fierce, Ducati stands to gain from the combined talents of both riders. With Marquez joining Ducati, Banaya faces a new level of pressure. Duan believes Banaya's continued strength and recent performances will be crucial as he navigates the challenges posed by his new teammate. Banaya is getting stronger, but he will face significant pressure from Mark. The Ducati team is performing well, and Mark will focus on developing the 2025 bike while competing for wins. It will be a tough battle but both riders know how to operate independently. Duan concluded. The arrival of Marc Marquez at Ducati next season is set to bring intense competition for Francesco Bagnaia. As the current world champion continues to impress, the dynamic between him and Marquez will be a focal point for the team and fans alike. Stay tuned as the 2025 season approaches, promising a thrilling new chapter in MotoGP. Francesco Bagnaia has been in exceptional form, showcasing an impressive performance at Assen. After winning both the sprint and the main race, he now matches Casey Stoner's Ducati win record. However, Bagnaia feels it's not fair to compare himself directly with Stoner. It's not fair to compare me to Casey because he achieved that number of wins in fewer years. His win percentage is higher. Winning at Assen is fantastic for me. It's a circuit I love. And although it's not the old Assen, winning here is very important. Quote from Francesco Bagnaia. Bagnaia also reflects on his personal connection to the Assen circuit. Recalling his first victory there in Moto3, he emphasizes the special significance of this track in his career. Assen is one of the most iconic circuits. Winning my first race here was magical. It was a significant moment not just for me but for Mahindra as well. This circuit gives me more satisfaction than others, Banyaya told. Despite his recent successes, Banyaya remains focused on the future. 
He emphasizes the need to maintain his form and address ongoing challenges, particularly with Jorge Martin remaining a formidable competitor. We must continue with this approach, trying to secure as many victories and points as possible. There's still a long way to go. Martin will always be competitive, and we must avoid mistakes, Peko told by Modisan. Banyaya also shares his thoughts on the Ducati GP24 bike, noting its strengths and areas for improvement. He acknowledges the bike's advantages while adapting to new challenges. The Ducati GP24 has its pros and cons. At Assen, I felt better entering corners but less so coming out compared to the 2023 model. Understanding the new tires has been crucial. It's not just about the bike. Working on the setup and electronics has been important, Banyaya concluded. Francesco Banyaya's impressive record and recent victories at Assen demonstrate his skill and dedication. While he remains humble about comparisons with Casey Stoner, his focus on continuous improvement and success is clear. As the season progresses, Banyaya's performance will be key in the ongoing championship battle. Marc Marquez holds the record for the youngest MotoGP winner, claiming his first victory at Coda in 2013 at the age of 20 years and 63 days. Pedro Acosta, who turned 20 on May 25th, has his final chance to break this record at the Saxon ring before the summer break. After that, he will be too old to surpass Marquez's mark before the British MotoGP in August. Acosta previously downplayed the significance of breaking the record, attributing it to a different era of MotoGP. I don't think so. It's a different MotoGP era now. You can talk about these things, but it's a different moment between our careers. Quote from Pedro Acosta. Despite winning last year's German Moto2 Grand Prix, Acosta has faced challenges in MotoGP, particularly with KTM's performance. With no KTMs on the podium in the last five races, a significant improvement in form will be required for Acosta to claim victory. We are heading to Sachs Centering, a track where I generally have better luck, and I think it will suit our bike better. Our approach will be step by step, so let's see how we feel on Friday, Acosta told. Tech 3 KTM's team manager, Nicholas Goyen, is optimistic about a better performance at Sachs Centering. Sachs Centering is very different from Assen and I believe it will be a good chance for us to bounce back. The track's characteristics should suit Pedro well. Quote from Nicholas Goyen. The unpredictable weather at Saxenring might present additional challenges, and the cancellation of the Kazakhstan round has limited Acosta's opportunities to break the record. The weather looks uncertain, so we must be prepared for different scenarios. Pedro will be highly motivated to perform after his crash at Assen, concluded from Nicolas Goyen. Tech 3 KTM teammate Augusto Fernandez, who struggled at Assen, is also looking forward to the Saxenring. Saxenring is very different from Assen, with fast corners and heavy braking. I'm hoping to be more competitive and build on last year's performance. Quote from Augusto Fernandez. Fernandez finished 11th at Saxenring last year and aims to improve on that result. Pedro Acosta's chance to break Marc Marquez's record at Saxenring represents a significant milestone in his career. With the support of his team and a favorable track layout, Acosta's performance this weekend will be closely watched. Promac's departure from Ducati to Yamaha means Ducati's supply of factory spec Desmosetis is now up for grabs. Ducati course general manager Gigi Doligna has confirmed that with Promax exit, the number of factory spec bikes will be reduced. The goal is to have three official bikes and three from the previous year. Quote from Gigi Doligna. This means that only one of Ducati's four satellite riders next season will have access to the new factory spec machines. VR46, having declined Yamaha's offer to strengthen its ties with Ducati, is now focused on securing a factory spec GP25 bike. That's the target and what we are working for. Quote from VR46 team source. Previously, VR46 aimed to get factory bikes for Marco Bezzecchi, 
but with Bezeki moving to factory Aprilia in 2025, VR46 is concentrating on acquiring the available GP25 machines. Fabio Di Gianantonio, VR46's current rider and a strong contender, has performed well, including a season-best fourth place at Assen. His future, along with his teammate Franco Morbidelli, is now uncertain. We're coming from a great weekend at Assen. I'm happy with our momentum and will aim to continue this form. Quote from Fabio Di Gianantonio. Di Gianantonio's strong performance has positioned him as a significant asset for VR46 and potentially a target for other teams, including the new factory Pramac Yamaha. VR46 might need to find a seat for Franco Morbidelli, while Ducati is looking for a place for Fermin Aldegar. Meanwhile, Grazini has one ride available, which will be filled by a rider replacing Marc Marquez, with Alex Marquez already signed for two more years. We have one ride open for next season, and we're assessing our options. Quote from Grazini team manager. The adjustments in Ducati's satellite lineup could affect team configurations and rider placements. As VR46 aims to secure a factory spec Ducati and with significant shifts in team lineups, the 2025 MotoGP season promises to be dynamic. With key riders and teams adjusting their strategies, the coming months will be crucial for finalizing these high stakes decisions. Thanks for watching ZNGP today, and this is your MotoGP news update. See you in the next video.